the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> the makers of Johnson's Wax for home and industry present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. <laughs> Here's a question that's going to sound funny to you, coming from me. Have you ever been dissatisfied with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat? Yes, that's just what I mean, dissatisfied. Have you ever bought a supply of Johnson's glow coat that didn't do the good job on your linoleum that you expected it to do? Now, the reason I ask you this question is this. We receive hundreds of voluntary letters from women who say glow coat is wonderful. Well, we're deeply grateful for those letters, but we sometimes wonder if we really are that good. It's only human to make mistakes, and during this critical war period, it has been a little more difficult to control materials and containers. So, I'd just like to say this. If you've had any experience with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat that has not been entirely satisfactory, we'd like to hear about it. We'll gladly replace any package that did not give you satisfactory service. You can send your letter direct to S.C. Johnson & Son, Racine, Wisconsin, or Brantford, Canada. We always want you to be happy with every purchase you make of Glow Coat or any other Johnson product. The way some people are acting at 79 Wistful Vista, you'd think the three most important dates in American history were 1492, 1776, and the one Alice Darling has with her new boyfriend tonight. As we meet, Fibber McGee and Molly. Would it be uh, too much to ask, dearie, for you to slip into a clean shirt and put your shoes on? Those carpet slippers look pretty disreputable. Why, who's coming? Alice's boyfriend, and you look awful. Hmm? Your shirt is must, there's cigar ashes on your vest, and altogether you look like a picnic tablecloth on the way home. <laughs> oh, Alice's boyfriend, Alice's boyfriend. Let's not get our teeth in an uproar just because that kid has snared a patsy for a hunk of rug cutting. <laughs> <laughs> I just got one more word to do on this crossword puzzle, and I'll have it. Where are you stuck? 32 vertical. Let's see, an eight-letter word meaning gubernatorial executive. Oh, is that what that is? Go- oh, that's gubernatorial. Yeah. Why, that's simple. Don't you know what gubernatorial means? Well, roughly, a goober is a peanut. <laughs> an executive means to execute somebody. So it's an eight-letter word meaning somebody who kills a lot of peanuts. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Baseball fan. That. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Too many letters. Look, dearie, the word is governor. Hmm? A governor is a gubernatorial executive. Oh, that can't be right. Governor starts with G. This word has got to start with a J on account of 56 horizontal. Well, what's 56 horizontal? That's a seven-letter word meaning real. I got that down as genuine. <laughs> genuine, my pet, starts with G and not J. It can't start with G. That throws the entire puzzle off. <laughs> See, it's got to be J because 19 vertical is a five-letter word meaning a flat bottom boat. B-A-R-J-E, barge. I know, but barge is not spelt with a J. Doggone it, now you spoil the whole puzzle. And I had it all done but one word. Okay, okay, okay. Shucks. What was it you wanted me to do? Run upstairs and brush up a little. We don't want Alice's boyfriend to think... Who's that? I'm afraid it's Alice's boyfriend. And you looking like an unmade bed. Oh, gee whiz, can I help us? Yes, dear. Yes, that's Bert. Will you let him in, please? Don't worry, Alice. We'll entertain him until you get your face on. Well, uh, if you'll just let him in, you won't have to entertain him. I'll be right down. Smooth down your colic and straighten your tie, dearie. Here comes romance. Um, I, uh, is this where Alice... Uh, I mean, does the residence of... Uh, is the house where... Uh, Are you Bert? I think so. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm Bert. Uh, come right in, Bert. Alice will be down in just a minute. We're Mr. and Mrs. McGee, and Alice is expecting you. Oh, thank you. Relax, bud. Unbend. 
Just between us males, Alice has been ready since 3.30 this afternoon, but you know how women are. They've got to put on the old act, you know. They'll keep you waiting if they have to go hide in the phone booth. <laughs> That's ridiculous, McGee. Alice just came home from the airplane plant a while ago. Come in and sit down, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Bert Taylor. Uh, just call me Bert. Alice has often mentioned you both. She has, eh? <laughs> what does she say about us, Bert? Oh, she says you, uh... Well, you're the type that... Well, if you'd only... Well, I don't remember exactly, but it was something. <laughs> well, that's a fairly safe summary of the conversation. Oh, here's Alice. Oh, doesn't she look nice? Oh, gee. Hi, Al. Hi, Bert. Hey, you do look pretty snappy, Alice. Well, if Mr. and Mrs. McGee will excuse us, I think we can Certainly be... Certainly. Run along and have fun. Oh, don't rush away, kids. <laughs> We're not putting us out a bit. Sit down a minute and relax. Looks like a rainy night anyway. Might as well sit here by the fire where there's no cover charge. Ever play four-handed dominoes? Uh, no, I... Uh, uh, Bert and I are going someplace to dance, Mr. McGee. Why, what's the matter with right here? My gosh, roll up the carpets and turn on the radio. <laughs> Everything for free. Molly and I might knock off a round or two ourselves, huh? Include me out, dearie. Huh? Until I started going to dances with you, I never knew that shindig was two words. <laughs> Well, uh, I thought maybe Alice and I'd go downtown and maybe go to a nightclub. <laughs> Gee, you look nice in girls' clothes, Alice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Bert. What does he mean, girls' clothes? Well, uh, Bert's never seen me in anything but my coveralls at the airplane plant, Mr. McGee. I think they make girls look so horribly masculine. Ah, oh, potash. <laughs> You're as feminine as a lost glove. Days, it's getting stormy. Oh, oh, we don't care, do we, Alice? Come on, let's... Oh, I love rainy nights myself. Let's go, Bert, and we'll see... Hey, you, you can't go out in this. Catch your death of cold between here and the curb. Bert, you ought to have more sense than drag a fragile kid like Alice out into weather like this. Well, it, it did sound sort of like a thunderburst. A hmm? uh, cloud storm. Hmm? Oh, gee, I didn't realize... Oh, Bert, that... I don't mind a bit. Come on, it'll be fun. We'll just dash out to your car and Oh, we... yeah, but, uh... Well, I, I didn't bring my car because... Well, I... I just got enough gas to get me to work and back. Oh, what do we care? Let's take a cab. A cab? Did you ever try to get a taxi in this town on a clear night? Well, divide that by four million, and that's your chances of getting one in the rain. <laughs> Come on, hang up your coats and spend the evening right here. We'd love to have you stay, you know that. Sure, sure, sure. Save you a lot of dough, too. You know about that 30% federal flip in the hot spots, don't you? You heard about that, didn't you, Charlie? His name is Bert, Mr. McGee. I thought it was Charlie. You're always talking about... McGee! Uh... <laughs> McGee, the boy's name is Bert, and he's the one Alice is always talking about. No, Molly, she's always talking well, about... Well, maybe we better stay in oh, there. Oh, the car. Get ready to watch it. I'm going to Billy Mills and the orchestra play Poinciana.
sitting here all cozy and warm with the rain coming down like that? Don't it? <clears throat> you sure you're comfortable in that straight chair, Alice? Don't you want to sit here on the Davenport with me and Bert and Molly? <laughs> no, thanks. I like this straight chair. It keeps me awake. Well, it's too bad the rain spoils your evening, Alice. Yeah. What do you mean, spoil it? They're having a swell time. We've been through the photograph albums twice. I told Bert all about how I fought in the last war and showed him a high school annual. You haven't showed Bert how you can take off your vest without removing your coat, Mr. McGee. <laughs> I'm saving that, Alice, in case the party got dull. In that case, you should have showed us an hour ago, McGee. I'll say so. <laughs> Why don't we run along upstairs, McGee? We'd both like to read in bed, and let's leave Alice and Bert to themselves. Oh, Mrs. McGee, you're so thoughtful. <laughs> yeah, sure are. <laughs> Ah, forget it, kids. I've seen the time when I'd love to have somebody like me around to entertain me, too. <laughs> well, what'll we do, kids? How about a game of cards? Who plays flinch? Uh, <laughs> Bert and I like to play records on the phonograph, but maybe it would bore you and Mrs. McGee unless you were upstairs where you couldn't hear them or something. <laughs> yeah. Let's play some records. Ah, you don't want to listen to records. My gosh, you've heard all that classical stuff a hundred times. How about me showing you some car tricks? I got a swell car trick, but I got to have a rubber band. Anybody got a rubber band? Nobody got a rubber band, huh? I suppose... That... Come in. Oh, for goodness sakes, Mr. Wellington, what are you doing out on a night like this? I am breaking in some new overshoes for a friend, Mrs. McGee. Here's the... Oh, excuse me, am I intruding... Oh, no more than usual, Siggy. You know Alice Darling, I think. Hello, Mr. Wellington. Good evening. And may I say that I prefer the way she is listed on our bank night records at the Bijou Theater as Darling Miss? Hmm? <laughs> oh, I'll go pile up some dead leaves, you old rake. <laughs> McGee, now, don't be so rude. By the way, Mr. Wellington, uh, this is Mr. Taylor, a friend of Miss Darling. Mm, hello, lad. Mm, hello. <laughs> What can we do for you, Mr. Wellington? I just came in to see if by any chance McGee could spare, for a brief time, of course, the umbrella he borrowed from me in 1936. <laughs> Not that I wish to appear to be snatching it back, you understand. My gosh, Sig, that umbrella was worn out and threw away long ago. Including, I suppose, the 14-carat gold handle? No, no, McGee had that made into a walking stick the time he sprained his ankle. Yeah. Be glad to loan you that, Wellington, but it wouldn't be much help in the rain, except to see how deep the puddles were. Yes. <laughs> well, just an inquiry, you know. Charge it off to mere morbid curiosity, if you wish. Yeah, we wish. <laughs> <laughs> Won't you sit down a while, Mr. Wellington? Thank you, no. I have been sitting down all afternoon. Oh, office work? Roller skating. Mm -hmm. Well, good evening, Pam. <laughs> Why isn't he nice? Yeah, he's okay, but too collegiate, if you ask me. He's always telling... Hey, you kids, don't do that. What are they doing, McGee? All huddled up together like that on the Davenport. My gosh, you don't have to sit so close together. There's plenty of chairs. <laughs> here, Bert, you sit over here by the desk. That's it. Alice, how about a nice sofa cushion on the floor? Ah, that's better. <laughs> There's room for everybody. Has it occurred to you, dearie, that Alice and Bert might want a minute or two alone together? But, gee, I was hoping... A minute or two alone, my clavicle. What they need on a night like this is people around them. Laughter, fun, gaiety. Has anybody got a rubber band? <laughs> wow, what a night. Hello, folks. I just thought I... Oh, excuse me. I didn't know you had company tonight. Well, you know Alice, Mr. Wilcox. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hello, Alice. And this is Bert Taylor, Jr. Hi, Howdy Bert. Too. He's Alice's swain who stayed in tonight because it's swaining. <laughs> you get it, kids? Swain, swaining? The humor's derived from the fact that play on words Ain't is part funny, of... McGee. No. <laughs> I thought it was rather excruciating in a sad sort of way. What on earth are you doing out on a night like this, Mr. Wilcox? Well, I usually bring my dog out for a walk about this time every night, but I wouldn't bring a dog out on a night like this. So I came alone. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> I saw your light and I thought I'd drop in. 
Drip would be a better word, Mr. Wilcox. <laughs> Take off that wet coat. No, thanks, Molly. I've got to run along. I'll bet the real reason you're walking, Junior, is you don't want to get that new car of yours all rained on. Have you got a new car, Mr. Wilcox? Well, no, no, I haven't. What on earth gave you the idea that... Oh, 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 oh. oh I know. He knows. <laughs> Why use some Johnson's car new on it this afternoon? It just looks new. Well, put some gum on my chair and call me Wrigley. <laughs> I gave him an opening. He could drive Eugene Pallet through. <laughs> uh, what's Johnson's car new, Mr. Wilcox? It's an automobile polish, isn't it, Mr. Wilcox? An automobile polish. Well, it's the automobile polish for car owners who want an easy-to-use, fast method of beautifying their cars. Cleans and polishes in one easy application. People who have cars really have to nurse them along nowadays, don't they, Mr. Wilcox? They sure do, Molly. That's why car new is such a blessing. It's so fast. It does such a thorough job. You just apply it, let it dry, and wipe it off, and presto, the gleam of your dreams. Uh, how do you spell car new, Mr. Wilcox? <laughs> Stooge. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's spelled C-A-R-N-U, Johnson's Car New. Do you have to be going, Mr. Wilcox? Yes, Molly, I really do. I've got to meet a woman at Kramer's Drug Store. Uh-oh, what will your wife say? She'll say hello. Oh. Good night, now. <laughs> He's a nice guy. Uh, who is he? Well, uh, he represents the Johnson Wax people, Mr. Taylor. He drops in on us almost every Tuesday night. Yeah, on a sort of an or-else basis. <laughs> Hey, hasn't anybody got a rubber band? I'd sure like to show you kids this card trick. It's pretty baffling. Hey, Molly, isn't there a rubber band in the desk? That desk is so full of stamps, nobody could find anything in it. Hmm? Oh, you uh, collect stamps, Mr. McGee? No, I don't, Bert. When he heard that the airmail rate was going from six cents to eight cents, he went all around town like a whirlwind buying up all the six cent stamps. <laughs> was more intelligent than most of his investments. Oh, yeah. Well, I caught the spy, didn't I? Uh, Mr. McGee, huh? will you show us your photograph album again, please? Oh, gee, Al, he's shown it to us twice. Well, there's nothing as fascinating as a bunch of home-took photographs. Here you are, kids. Let's see the ones on page 17. What's on page 17? Oh, oh, yes. Those are the ones of McGee and me in the canoe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just you two alone together. Isn't that wonderful, Bert? Oh, boy, wouldn't it be, though? <sighs> well, there's nothing like getting away from people when you're young and in love, is there, Molly? No, there isn't. So let's go upstairs and read and leave Alice and Bert. Hey, I got a better idea. How about making some fudge? Oh, fudge. I mean, oh, fudge. <laughs> Gee, that's a peach of an idea, Mr. McGee. That's super. Come on, Bert, let's you and I go out in the kitchen and make fudge. Oh, swell. When you get it done, bring us some. What we'll do you mean, when they get it done? We'll all go out and make fudge. <laughs> Many hands make light work, you know. Come on, everybody, let's all go out. What's that? Hey. I hear somebody out in the kitchen? I thought I heard something out there, too. Uh-oh. Who's in the kitchen? Just me, ma'am. Beulah. <laughs> we, we thought you'd gone home long ago, Beulah. No, sir. I started to go, and then it begun to rain real hard, and I thought I'd better wait a while on account of my rheumatism. <laughs> Count of your what? On account of my rheumatism. Tism, Beulah. Oh, yes, it is, ma'am. Begging your pardon. <laughs> See, my doctor says genuine rheumatism, and he's one of the finest dying asterisms in this town. <laughs> you mean you've just been sitting in the kitchen waiting for the rain to stop, Beulah? Yes, but I've been listening to the radio out there, Miss Alice. Oh, those brains and Alan, they're the cutest people. <laughs> hey, Beulah, you got a rubber band? I got a great card trick if I could only find a rubber band. You got a rubber band? No, so all I got is a long piece of elastic. Oh, swell. Let me take it. I'll cut it. I'll cut off a short length. I'm sorry, sir. Hmm? Nobody ain't gonna cut nothing off this piece of left. <laughs> you see, where I got it, I need every inch of it, including the stretch. <laughs> oh. Well, it looks like you kids are gonna have to wait till after the war to see this card trick. Oh, I'm sorry. I love card tricks. Can anybody tell fortunes? I can't. Well, me either. I used to tell fortunes in coffee ground, Miss McGee. Well, don't you still do it, Bueller? No, sir. Coffee grounds are so much alike, it make everybody's life too monotonous. <laughs> <laughs> you better take up tea leaves, Beulah. And grab an orange pico into the future. Grab an orange pico into the future to make it look again. Love that man. <laughs>
The King's Men sing The Enchilada Man. I know a quaint little guy with an eye for business. He's not the peanutty man. This little guy has a cry that will wake the dead. He's not the popcorny man. He has a cart with an article so delicious. He's not the donutty man. He's wearing a smile. He's barrels of fun. There couldn't be two. There could only be one. Hear him come along. Hear his little song. Buy an enchilada. Nothing on his feet. Patches on his seat. Try an enchilada. It's a silly whim patronizing him. But you really got her. Who's the man in question spreading indigestion? He's the enchilada man. He ought to be in the opera with his enchilada-la-la, enchilada-la-la-la. He's much too good for the opera with his get em while fresh enchilada rhapsody. trick I do. I picked it up from a magician when I was in vaudeville. Did I happen to mention I was in vaudeville once, Bert? Uh, no, I guess that's one thing you didn't mention. Hmm. I think we better be going, getting upstairs, McGee. Hmm? Alice and Bert, they want to talk. Oh, thank you, Mrs. McGee. You're what very... do you mean they want to talk? Didn't you just hear Bert ask me about the time I was in vaudeville? No. Don't you want to hear about the time I was in vaudeville, Bert? Well, I, uh... <laughs> Why, certainly. One of the most interesting periods of the American theater. Well, sir, a guy and I by the name of Fred Nittany had a subordinate act that really stood out. Yeah, stood outside of agents' offices every day but Sundays. <laughs> well, we were ahead of our time is all. <laughs> you see, Bert, me and Fred had an act of fast patter songs and dances. Fred had entered on the vamp with a buck and wing through the center door fence, you see. Huh? Ah, saved from a life of vaudeville. This may not be the palace, but it's home. <laughs> Come in. Is this a residence of Mr. and Mrs. Fema McGee? <laughs> Yes, it is, Bud. What can we do for you? Well, I hope I'm not intruding on your privacy. I am Mr. Wichards. Wabbit Wichards. Oh. Well, how do you do, I'm sure. And this is Miss Darling and Mr. Taylor, Mr. Wichards. Uh, how do you do? Hiya, Mr. Wichards. I'm really pleased to meet you. But the name isn't Wichards, Mrs. McGee. It's Wichards. <laughs> you know, as in Wichard the Wine-Hearted. Oh, Richards. Oh, I get it. Wabbit Richards. Oh, not Wabbit. Hmm? Wabbit. <laughs> you know, it's like Robert Louis Stevenson Oh, oh, sure, of course, Robert Richards yeah, That's correct <laughs> What's on your mind, Mr. Richards? Well, I live in the house across the street And I thought I'd stop in and report that you left your lawnmower on the lawn in the wane And it's getting all rusty <laughs> Oh, thank you very much McGee, run out and put the lawnmower in the garage What do you mean, run out? In this weather? That isn't my lawnmower anyway. I just borrowed it from Doc Gamble. Nevertheless, nevertheless, it's getting awfully westy. Well, thank you for telling us, Mr. Richards. Say, are you the people who just moved in a few days ago? Yes, ma'am. We moved here from Grand Rapids. <laughs> I work in the airplane plant. Why, so do I, Mr. Richards. Maybe I can ride out there with you in your car. Oh, I'd be delighted, Miss Darling. <laughs> then we delighted. What do you do at the airplane plant, Mr. Richards? I'm a draftsman. Oh. I make blueprints. <laughs> May I ask, what do you do for a living, Mr. McGee? I was afraid somebody was going to ask me that sometime. Well, he's connected with the Johnson Wax people, Mr. Richards. Won't you sit down till the weather clears a little? Oh, 
Thank you. I don't believe I can, Mrs. McGee. I just went over to tell you about the one more. Good night. <laughs> Well, he seems like a nice little man, doesn't he? Yeah, very neighborly. Glad to know about that lawnmower, too. I'll run out in the morning and throw a canvas over it, too. <laughs> what good will that do? It'll be all rusty by that time. I know, but if Doc Gamble comes by and sees it, it won't hurt his feelings. He's very sensitive about that lawnmower. Hey, what are you yawning about? Well, I'd say it was because I'm sleepy. Hmm? You'd better go to bed, too. Remember, you're painting the porch swing tomorrow. Well, by gosh, here we invited these kids to stay, and if we go to bed, who'll entertain them? Oh, don't you worry about us, Mr. McGee. Oh, we'll be all right. I can't stay much longer anyway. You're sure? Of course they're sure, McGee. Now, come along. Oh, uh, hey, wait a minute. I never finished telling Bert about my vaudeville act. You see, Bert... McGee. Hmm? Come on. Oh, okay. <clears throat> well, good night, kids. If you want something to read, help yourself to either of the books in the bookcase. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Mr. McGee. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. Taylor. No, no, don't get up. Uh, good night. Uh, good night, kids. Gee whiz, Molly, I feel like a dog running out on them like this. You'll be bored stiff if you're ready to... Oh, boy. Oh, turn off the light, Bert, and let's just sit here by the fire. Oh, that'll be swell, Alice. They're nice, aren't they, Bert? Well, she's swell, but he's a gabby old clunk. <laughs> Oh, well, it's okay now. Gee, your hair smells nice. Oh, I'm glad you think so, Bert. And, Bert, hmm? please don't squeeze my hand so hard. If I had a ring on one of these fingers, it would really hurt with you squeezing like that. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, speaking of rings, Alice, I, uh, <laughs> well, I, uh, uh... Yes, Bert? I, uh, well, I was wondering if you, well, uh... <laughs> Hey, I got it. I got it. McGee, come back here. Hey, 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 kids, look, look, look what I found. A rubber band. Now, I'll show you a card trick that'll make your eyes pop. Oh, for the... Okay, Bert, pick out a card. Go on, go on, any card, honey, any card. I'll take the deck and pick out a card. Pick out a card. Any card, you like. I'd like to talk to you for a moment about your automobile. If you've taken a good look at it lately, you realize it's not getting any younger. You probably get a little tired of hearing so many people tell you to take good care of that car. But after all, both from a patriotic and a selfish point of view, it's still the thing to do, isn't it? That's probably reason number one for getting some Johnson's Car New that cleans and polishes in one application after that dull-looking finish. Or maybe with you, the number one reason is the looks of your car and the greater pleasure you get out of it when the finish shines like a mirror. With Johnson's Car New, you, you can't make over the motor or put on new tires, but believe me, you can restore the beauty of your car's finish. And you can do it with so little work that cleaning and polishing a car with Car New is just as easy for a woman as for a man. Johnson's Car New is a liquid. It dries to a white powder, and off comes the dullness when you wipe off the powder. Now is a very good time to give the finish of your car a spring cleaning with Johnson's Car New, spelled C-A-R-N-U. Uh-huh. Well, McGee, you use very bad judgment tonight. What do you mean? Don't you realize that two young people like that want to be alone with each other? Ah. Uh. They don't want middle-aged people like us cramping their style. Ah, oh, they were having a wonderful time. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Bert signal to Alice that he was getting an awful bang out of me. <laughs> How did he signal? He jerked his left thumb at me while pretending to shoot himself in the right temple. <laughs> ah, well, go to sleep, dear. Okay. Good night. Good night, all. The character of Mr. Wellington heard on this program was played by Ransom Sherman. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Rights for Home and Industry, and inviting you all to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.